to week six, lesson number two, or 6B. We're going to deal with uh, verification of identities and working on those sums and differences as we build towards solving. So take a screenshot, pull up the PDF, or Google for these identities yourself. Here's the next slide. And we've got a new set of identities. We are going to be dealing with sum and difference in this video. So you will need access to these identities. Ooh, excuse me. Jumping on into one of our two verification questions, this one's our simpler one, just to walk you through which identities I used. This is a Pythagorean identity that I converted into its singular Pythagorean tan squared. And this is a reciprocal identity. Let me circle and square. There we go. And this is a reciprocal identity that we use to convert to 1 over tan squared. If I have tan squared on bottom and tan squared on top, they cancel out and we end up with just one is equal to one. Super easy, very simplistic definition of verify. Let's look at a harder one. Let's look at this and you go, whoa, hold the phone. It just seems chaotic because we really, we put in this step each time and we never needed this information, right? Because it never really equaled it until this point. So really, that's kind of an extraneous bit of information. So if that helps you out, I went ahead and crossed it all out so we can't really see it anymore until it's necessary. All right. So what are some things that we did here? Let's identify. This is a sum identity, and this is a difference identity. I literally took the formula for my, oops, formula for my sum identity, and that's this whole thing right here. And the formula for my difference identity, and that's this whole shebang right here. So literally, if you look at that slide I showed you for sum and difference formulas, and you literally just applied it, that's all we did. That's the only thing I did in that very first step. So the second thing we did is we actually notice, let me pull up a different color so you can kind of identify. We end up doing first outer inner last. We distribute these values, multiply through. And I'm not going to prove it to you. You can prove it to yourself. But really, this is a multiplication of conjugates. So it's going to end up as a difference of squares. So all I end up with is the squared of the first minus the squared of the second. So now my lines are all over the page. So I am going to erase some of this. So just be aware. Um, but this is kind of what we end up with. So that's just where we're at. Like I said, I'm going to erase a little bit of this just to get it out of our way. Okay. So now, as we continue on, we realize, okay, so first of all, this is sum and difference. And then all we did was multiply. That's all we've done at this point. Well, now here you might say, hey, there's a sign here and a sign squared here. Can't I just factor out? Hold the phones. That's sine of X and sine of Y. No, you can't just factor those out. It doesn't work that way. But let's notice something else. So factor didn't work. Great thought. Let's notice something else. What am I trying to get it to look like? It kind of already looks like that. I've already got a sine squared of X and minus a sine squared of Y. So the only issue are those cosines, right? So if that's the only issue that we're dealing with, let's go ahead and deal with those cosines. So if I look at my identities, there's lots of different things I can deal with with those cosines. I could look at this reciprocal identity, one over secant. That doesn't really help me though, right? Because if I look at the end goal, doesn't look like that's what I need. I don't need secant. I just need sine. Okay, well, maybe that doesn't work. So let's go look at our next set of identities. What about the co-function identity? Well, my X and Y, nothing's happening to them. So they're not shifting quadrants. So the co-function identity is out. What about even and odd? Again, my X and Y are positive. So that doesn't really help us. If I change it to even and odd, I might just be changing the sign of the cosine. That doesn't really help me. But hold the phones. Let's look at those Pythagorean identities. If sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, then wouldn't cosine squared, oh, sorry, one minus cosine squared also equal sine squared? So I can go ahead and convert both of these guys to their Pythagorean identities, which is visible right here. The only difference between them is I brought the correct variable attached. And here's where I'm going to start to see some of you guys making some mistakes because some of you are in the habit of dropping the variable, which is fine when it's the exact same variable. Here, we've got multiple variables. Be very careful. Sine is never by itself. It's an operator. Trig is never by itself. It's like plus, minus, multiplication, division. You can't just have a plus. 
it doesn't work that way. It's got to be something plus something, right? So <laughs> sign can't just be hanging by itself. Sign is always attached to something. All right. So now I can go ahead and distribute this sign and this sign. And I end up with this crazy, funky thing happening here and this crazy, funky thing happening here. Well, before I do anything super crazy, before I look at this last sentence and say, okay, I got a lot bigger instead of a lot smaller, let's look and see what we got. We're all down to all signs. If I'm down to all signs, I'm at least a lot closer to what I'm looking for. But look at this. This is a negative sine squared x plus sine squared y, and this is a positive sine squared x plus sine squared y. So guess what happens to that whole shebang doodle They disappear you are left with that final verified version. That's it. I know it was a lot chaos here. I know it was a lot longer. But the only way to get through these is to watch a lot of videos, you know, people working through verifications and solves, and you see their pattern, and then actually you practicing. All right. Moving into sums and difference. So the next three problems, we're going to be dealing with sums and differences. So we're going to start easy. Just break this up into its sum and difference. Well, here, my uh, sum and difference is that cosine, uh, ooh, hold on, what did we do? Oh, this has to do, so this is a sum and a difference. I do agree. I see what they're doing here. This is a little bit more uh, upper level. This is a little bit more conceptual than I need you to really understand. I just need you to be able to apply and use the sum and difference for this video. So we're going to ignore this question, and we're going to move on to these two questions. Here we go. So we're going to ignore that last one. This is where we're at. This is the more relevant information. So if I'm given cosine of 11 pi over 12, how do I solve that without a calculator? And a lot of you are still going to just try to plug it into a calculator and let the calculator do the work for you. That's not going to help you as you build the foundations for solving. So just giving you that little hint. So I realized that 11 pi over 12 is not on the unit circle, but 12 has a relationship to the unit circle, doesn't it? Because we have pi over 3, 3 goes into 12, pi over 4, 4 goes into 12, pi over 6, 6 goes into 12, pi over 2, 2 goes into 12, and then pi over 1, 1 goes into 12. So literally, if I break up 11 pi over 12 into some sort of addition subtraction, those values should show up on the unit circle. So let me show you what that looks like. If I take, well, there's the sum and difference formula we're going to use. I'm a little early on that animation. Sorry about that. But if I take 11 pi over 12 and break it up into this kind of pattern, something over 12 plus something over 12 is going to equal that, right? So let's try some numbers. You can try 10 and 1. Isn't that the first and easiest? 10 plus 1 equals 11 for sure. 10 over 12 will simplify, but 1 over 12 will not. And 1 12th is not on the unit circle. So that doesn't help me. Let's try our next best set. 9 and 2. Ta-da! 9 12 simplifies and 2 12 simplifies. So let's go ahead and plug those in. You could have picked different numbers. You could have ended up with 8 and 3 or, you know, various numbers, so on and so forth. Uh, not 7 and 4. That won't help you. But 9 pi over 12 and 2 over 12 simplify to 3 pi over 4 and pi over 6. And guess what? Those two are on the unit circle. So I now end up with cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 6. And that's when my formula should have shown up. And that's how I know this formula is in play. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in all that information. Using my hand trick, my chart trick, my unit circle, my first quadrant, whatever, I'm going to solve each of those parts, cosine of 3 pi over 4, cosine of pi over 6, sine of 3 pi over 4, and sine of pi over 6. Now I know those. So if cosine of 3 pi over 4 is equal to negative, pi, negative square root of 2 over 2, and this is equal to this, then I'm just going to plug those in. And if this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, then I'm going to plug those in. So that's all I did is replaced. Now we multiply across. The square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, square root of 2 times 1 is square root of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And we put those two together. And ta-da, we end up with our answer. So on your homework, if you end up with decimal answers, you may not get full credit. One last question. What if it was in degrees? This one's already kind of up and open for us. So 375 is not on the unit circle, but 330 plus 45 is, or you could have done a subtraction. That's fine as well. So we end up with this sum and difference formula. We solve cosine of 330 is square root of 3 over 2, cosine of 45, square root of 2, sine this, sine that, multiply straight across, end up with this, put our two fractions together, and ta-da, we're done. So that's all I want to go over in this video. I will see you 
in the next video and good luck.